G'day. In this video, we're actually making a Venturi for a simple mixer for a LPG setup on a car. Here's a picture of what a mixer looks like. Um, the air goes in at the top. The gas is coming in from the pipe at the side. Goes around a gallery. Um, and then when the pressure decreases because of the air being compressed, um, the LPG can come out of the holes in the, around the gallery that's in the Venturi. It gets mixed with the air and goes on to uh, propel the car along. Here we have me drilling holes again using that great big cast iron block that I showed in my last video. It's a bit of a coincidence that it's come up straight away that I had to make some Venturis. These Venturis are just prototypes. I won't be making them in the final production run, but I'm quite happy to make a few prototypes. I've got everything I need to make them, so it's not too difficult. There's the 32mm drill going through the blank. Power fed. And then after the holes drilled in these, I go on to face them and turn the end of them just a bit so that they are true and I have some cleaned up parallel turning to go into the CNC chuck that I'll be using to do most of the turning with. Here on the manual lathe, I'm using a carriage stop so that I know how far to move the tool along in the uh, along the centre line of the lathe and uh, just using a DRO to find the place where I want to face them off. This means that the blanks are much more suitable for the CNC because my small CNC doesn't like big surprises if something's cut too long. Here you can see how it fits in the chuck jaws. Just remove enough to give a nice uh, amount to hold. That's a three jaw chuck with the normal jaws in. Now each slot on a three jaw chuck or a four jaw is numbered and so are the jaws. You can see the number one there on that jaw and each jaw has to go in that slot and it has to go in that slot in the right order so that the thing actually centralizes and works properly. Uh, these are the soft jaws I'll be using. I thought they'd be okay but they were actually running out a bit so using boring bar i had to clean up the edge and the back face to make sure that the thing was running true because these parts were going to have to go in that chuck for several operations and i wanted them to run true um, when i got to the software the turret had been disconnected from the um, software so according to my analytics a lot of the people that watch my videos are aged 25 to 45 um, most of some of them weren't even born when this software was um, invented so I thought I'd just go through the steps I've just left that program and gone to the command line in the DOS software I'm just typing in the name of the .exe file to make extra gold work and then I'm going to go down to the folder and then scroll down using arrow keys to the actual file that I want to edit this file is the one that actually uh, contains all the information for the machine to run and then by hitting E for edit I can go edit that and then I've got to come down to the second line and run along to the first zero in that line to actually change that zero to a one and then the software knows that the lathe has a turret rather than just a tool post and then once that's done you just hit escape and you get the save file and quit option you just hit enter and when you've done that you just hit Q for quit 
and you leave the X Tree Gold software and go back to the Hercus software and type in Hercus PC on the command line and you're back in the software that runs the lathe. And you can see when I go to the manual page down on the bottom right there are radio buttons for control of the turret which weren't there before. So there you can see we now have a turret. The first operation we have to do with this uh, Venturi is to create the gallery which allows the gas to travel all around the mixer from the inlet pipe. With this particular Venturi there's a lot of material has to be removed and we start off by using just a canned grooving cycle which is easily put into the code because it's part of the software that's five amps we're drawing taking these cuts which is the maximum supposed uh, current to be drawn by this motor you see some shape taking place now you just go around and finish off the groove and you see there's a decent amount of material being removed to create the gallery for that gas to come into the mixer and flow all the way around this venturi and there'll be holes drilled in the venturi for the gas to be drawn into the airway where the air is coming in and that's how it mixes the gas and the air just taking a OD cut here these will be pressed into the bodies eventually um, and they need to be a good fit that's what it looks like finished Now this is the second operation, we're holding it on the same piece of material as we were before. This is why these jaws needed to run through so that when the part went back in for a second operation, everything was running through and you can see it looks pretty good there. This um, boring bar weighs about 200 grams, that piece of the boring bar and the holder. Um, it's very heavy for this turret and in fact I don't try and operate the turret with one of those boring bars in place, it's just too heavy. Um, this turret really does not like to be out of balance. Um, here we're just taking some cuts, removing the material. There was a fair bit to take out. Now we're going around the radius at the top. That's just going in a straight line and now we'll have to start taking some uh, more, doing a back pocket basically. Um, Draw, uh, take, removing material to create the V. I'm falling over my words here. Okay, you can see that's not chipping very well. That if I was going to make more, I'd change the depth of cut and the feed. But doesn't need doing for six parts. Yeah, this this operation should have been done after the holes were drilled, so that the holes got cleaned up. We'll, I'll show you in a minute why. You can see the amount of swarf from six parts. That, that tray is nearly full. I mean, it's just six parts. So much material wasted. Right, now we're going to drill some holes. We should have done this before the last operation, but we're doing it this way. It's a long time since I made these. I made tens of thousands of these things and I forgot to do the holes next. Mainly, I think, because I didn't used to drill them, my wife did. This is just a, a jig that I made to, well, this is the second one, actually. first one was used to, as a guide to uh, how to do it properly, and this one works reasonably well. It's rattling about a bit there because the drill is not bolted to the bench. You see the column of the drill is actually moving too, so it's not the jig.
So that's how we did uh, probably hundreds of thousands of holes in Venturi's back when we used to make a lot of these things. This is the reason why you drill the holes and then you clean out the centre of the Venturi because it saves you having to clean them up like I had to do with this one by using some memory on the inside um, of the Venturi. All right, that's what the finished Venturi looks like. Thank you for watching.